because when we have sick birds, it doesn't matter if it is coccidiosis, if it is a virus such as NDV or a bacteria, let's say um, mycoplasma, uh, we, the, these birds, they do need a immune support and this requires more nutrients. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes or less. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel. I'm a co-host of the show and associate professor here at Auburn University and uh, joined by a colleague in our department, uh, Dr. Tina Lopez, who is currently a postdoctoral fellow. Uh, who's, who's kind of been in different institutions around the world, but we've been lucky enough to have her here at Auburn for, uh, I guess, a couple of years. So uh, get to know you a little bit better and, and hear about what you're working on on Newcastle, uh, which is not uh, a core nutrition topic, but we will uh, talk a little bit about how nutrition might influence that uh, by the time this is over. So Tana, uh, thanks for joining and I look forward to talking with you today. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Rochelle, for having me. And, and yes, Newcastle is not a main focus when we talk about nutrition. Uh, and I will try my best to try to overlap it with nutrition overall. Sure. Yeah. So just to start us out with, can you talk a little bit about just Newcastle disease in general, reorient the audience and, and talk about, you know, uh, how it progresses and, and how we currently try to control it? Yeah. So um, Newcastle is a virus. Now talking about the more um, virology part, that is kind of boring <laughs> but to some, but uh, it is a paramyxovir virus um, and there is a lot of serotypes that um, exist for this virus that can affect birds. But when we talk about Newcastle disease, we're talking about the serotype one. So if you heard about avian ortoavula virus one, that's Newcastle disease. So um, there are other classifications too, such as pathotypes, what is the pathotype is classified in four different um, pathotypes based on the uh, intracerebral pathogenicity index. So what does that mean? It means that we have uh, types of NDV that are asymptomatic, enteric. So you don't have any symptoms. You have the lentogenic ones. They are um, that can cause respiratory disease. So um, navy young birds, and it can be caused by vaccines. So, for example, if you deliver uh, a live vaccine such as Lasota to one day old chicks they can have a vaccine turnover, a vaccine response with symptoms, okay? Uh, but overall, it's not a big problem. The mesogenic one, uh, it, it causes mortality, like low or uh, um, no mortality. So it's also not a big problem. And then we have the velogenic. They are uh, the ones that can cause um, depression, so you have a uh, increase, decrease in the production, like laying eggs or even broilers not gaining weight, um, air gasping. You have you can have diarrhea, hemorrhage. So um, and the most classical ones are the, the neural symptoms. So birds with um, Paralysis in one wing or one leg only. Um, so those birds end up dying because they can walk and they can reach water and feed. Um, that happens mainly with younger birds. While you can have in the let's say, especially backyard flocks that you don't have out in out out that you have birds mixed different ages mixed. Then you will have the young ones. Uh, having those symptoms while the, the old ones uh, are perfectly fine or just having like diarrhea, something like that. Yeah. Okay? Okay. 
So those are the main symptoms. And it can be conf confounded with avian flu, with uh, metapneumovirus, with bronchi bronchitis. So it is important to understand that more than the, the symptoms, we do have to uh, work with uh, diagnost diagnostic tests such as ELISA, PCR, or uh, hemagglutination, hemagglutination inhibition assays. Okay, so as far as I know, you're, again, your research is not primarily around nutrition, uh, but where is your research specifically? What gaps are you trying to address uh, in, this, in this problem in Newcastle's right now? So uh, the gap that we are trying to fill right now is because when we vaccinate the birds and they later get infected by NDV, uh, by a field strain, uh, the vaccination somehow protects them from um, showing symptoms and dying, but it does not prevent the viral shedding. So that is the gap they are trying, we are trying to at least gather information so it can improve vaccine production. And we do this by trying to uh, identify the immune gene expression profile after we vaccinate the birds with different types of NDV vaccines, with different vaccination programs, and see where like where are the main differences and the main overlaps basically that's where we are right now and that shedding is problematic because uh, obviously it increases viral load so biosecurity risk but also just if they're shedding they're probably um, still you know the immune system is reacting to some regard and, and, and continued immune activation which could impact production and growth is that those are the main concerns with the continued shedding of the virus exactly um, if we if the birds share the virus besides you having uh, these production problems yep, that sure. you don't want yeah. if a commercial uh, house, a commercial farm gets NDV, then uh, it needs to be reported right away and then it will be locked out. And then the main problem is because then you have economic losses. So um, we do not have it circulating right now uh, here in commercial birds in US or in Brazil, uh, but we have in Middle East, Africa. So for them, this viral shedding problem happens. For us here in the U.S., it's more uh, for uh, game birds, such as we see in California. Very good. So so where do you see the future of research on, again, on the immunization piece? Uh, how do you think things might change to help control this better? <laughs> good question, Sam. Um, right now, I think, especially after uh, covid we are having um, we are having a huge advance in vaccine technologies, such such as uh, for COVID, we have the mRNA uh, vaccines. That is not something that happens right now with Newcastle disease. And as we we mentioned earlier, you mentioned earlier. Um, it is a topic that is really in close to basic research right now, but um, I really hope that we can find key markers. By markers, I mean um, genes that are later, later transformed in proteins that can at least be used to uh, mark uh, immunity in birds. Yeah. So maybe through a rep test, or, but I see the the things that we are working right now. I see more um, being applied as a R and D side. Okay. Yeah. You know, to improve vaccines' ability to cause uh, to challenge the immune system and, and cause a um, better response. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate. Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates can improve nutrient utilization, gut health technologies differ by type, 
and how liquid smoke can light your bird performance on fire. Cary isn't just leading in animal agriculture, we're innovating it. So certainly uh, opportunities for different and more advanced technologies on the vaccine side. And then, you know, from my perspective, again, as a nutritionist, always thinking how we can manipulate this. And this is something that you thought about. We know that the, the uh, nutritional needs of the immune system are often a little bit different than that for, for growth and production. There are specific nutrients we can change to try to try to modulate that a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, for sure, Sam. Um, and that's why we do have different um, nutritional recommendations depending on the font. If we go to NRC, for example, they uh, require a very low amount of vitamin D, for example, um, for, for birds. And then if we go to a um, genetic house uh, broiler manual, they recommend a huge amount. Why? Because when we have sick birds, it doesn't matter if it is coccidiosis, if it is a virus such as NDV or a bacteria, let's say um, mycoplasma, uh, we, the, these birds, they do need a immune support. And this requires more nutrients. And when I, why am I citing vitamin D? Because vitamin D has its classical function that is like uh, calcium phosphorus absorption in the small intestines to um, support bone health. But indirectly, when you support bone health, you're supporting um, bone marrow. That is the, the heart of the, the adaptive immunity. So... The nutrition and immunology overlaps uh, right there at vitamin D uh, because uh, directly talking about uh, how vitamin D acts on immunity, uh, some immune cells like monocytes, they do have vitamin D receptors. And when uh, those uh, vitamin D receptors are activated, those monocytes, they can um, become then transform into um, T cells. So then then supporting a um, an adaptive immune response, let's say helping vaccination, right? This last part, totally speculative, all right? Yeah, <laughs> but true, this true. vaccination part, but it's it's an idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, talking about innate immunity, uh, then vitamin D can um, can decrease uh, inflam inflammatory, pro-inflammatory interleukines for, from being secreted. So then you can have um, less inflammatory uh, symptoms such as depression, or even we can prevent a hyper-inflammatory response to happen within this flock. So can that uh, help with holding on the, the, the bro broiler or laying hand performance? That's something that that can be um, can be explored. Outside of the vitamins, do you see some potential for other nutrients outside of vitamin D? Maybe other trace minerals. I know this is something that that has been absolutely, at. yeah, absolutely. Um, what I see uh, right now are micro minerals. They also, especially uh, zinc. Zinc is well known for su supporting um, immunity and is used like for decades, uh, especially when we do have uh, stressful situations. Um, and why, why zinc is so, so important for uh, innate immunity? Because there is a group of proteins that they are called zinc finger proteins. We don't need to have this in mind. But... Um, those proteins, they are uh, part of the first line on viral recognition. And they trigger the uh, a immune immune cascade called interferon type one. And this cascade ends up producing uh, proteins that have direct uh, antiviral actions. So 
in that sense, zinc is so important for health birds. Um, another another nutrient that I've seen that is becoming more and more uh, studied regarding immunity is um, omega three, especially as fish oil for um, especially my understanding is that is being ex more uh, tested for broilers during uh, oxidative stress situations such as uh, heat stress, coccidiosis, or even uh, necrotic enteritis challenges. So um, when I think about nutrition as immune modulator, uh, those are the, th the three main um, nutrients that come to my mind, but of course we do have other good um, antioxidant oxidative stress uh, nutrients such as selenium and um, vitamin E and more and more. Absolutely. No, this is something that I have done a little bit of work in and, and continue to be interested in. Uh, you know, we we know that those nutrients are there, uh, are important, play important roles. And then, you know, we have to also think when the bird is, um, you know, challenged at any of these things, sometimes even with vaccination, uh, you know, or any type of inflammation, feed intake goes down. So, you know, then that's playing a role of, of how much access the birds have to the nutrients as well. So uh, digestibility and, and then the increase, you know, post-absorptive needs by the immune system. So very dynamic. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're learning more and we have better tools, like you mentioned, to kind of look at some of these things as well. So, uh, yeah, really exciting stuff. And, and thank you for, for sharing this with us today. Thank you so much, Sam, for for inviting me and for having me uh, at this podcast. Um, it was a very interesting um, talk. Well, thanks again, Ty. We, we, we really learned a lot and I appreciate it. And uh, for all of you who joined, uh, if you enjoyed this episode and want to catch future episodes, please uh, like and subscribe on, on uh, whatever platform you're listening. And until next time, uh, this is Sam Rochel signing out on the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.